Hello everybody, any and everyone. This is Linenara here. Just oh, let me sorry. Hello, hello. Okay. I think we're still good. Let me uh, make sure. And this is uh one last night, by the way. <laughs> Didn't even say the name when I was introducing the video this time. Alright. Hope you guys are having a good day. Let's get started soon. Alright. Yes. We are good to go. Let's see what we find for let's see what we continue off in the store. <clears throat> If we can survive the end of the world, what's to say a simple old machine can too? Ah, fair enough. So, what's next? I don't think we'll be able to do anything with those other stores. Uh, there's still one place of interest we haven't checked. I hooked my thumb to the right in the direction of the parking garage and started walking. Why there? While most people focus on the stores, they often overlook cars. There's more to be found in them than you'd initially think. Like what? From personal experiences, I found some good blankets and pillows, a few backpacks, and a variety of self-defense items from pocket knives to pepper spray. As morbid as it is, it can also be fun to try and piece together what kind of person drove the, that car. You know, what someone has in their car can tell a lot about them. Yeah, like how complete, uh, like how completely messy my car is. Did you have a car? I did. It was a nice sedan. What did you have in it? We don't need to discuss that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'd say. Sensing he'd struck gold, Xavier intensified his stare as, he, as his smile widened. What, what was in your car, Dorian? What are you hiding? Oh, look, we're here. We weren't, but I sped up to get closer and avoid any embarrassment. I wasn't sure if I even had anything in, the, in it that was damning. I just wanted to avoid giving that back further ammunition. As we approached, I saw the ground ahead of us slanting, slanting downward. The entrance to the garage was underground, which was far less than ideal. I was tempted to turn back to avoid getting trapped inside, or fighting in an enclosed space, should the situation come to that. But I knew this provided a good distraction for Xavier. Everything came with a little risk nowadays, anyhow. If we managed to find some good supplies, too, it'd be for the best. We'll stick to the lowest three floors. That way, should something happen, we can manage a quick escape, or at least make it outside to better fighting ground. Then should we start at the third and make our way down? It'd let us know any alternate. It'd let us know any alternate escape routes. <laughs> now you're thinking, kid. Taking a scan at surface level, I analyzed the environment and listened intently for any potential signs of danger. The light in the sky illuminated the streets as it began to take on the hues of sunset, providing me with enough of a view to see. Uh, we were in the clear for the moment. Mm. Keep your weapon out just in case we encounter something inside. Oh boy, I wonder if that actually is going to happen. Ooh, spooky sound effects. I need some water. My companion and I entered the structure, and he raised my spear as he drew his bow and knocked an arrow from his quiver. Slowly but surely, we made our way up to the third floor as we watched and were luckily met with no threats. A fair amount of cars were scattered amongst the garbage, leaving me with hope that we'd be able to find some goodies amongst them. Xavier and I approached the nearest one so I could teach him some amateur breaking and entering. Okay, kid. First step is to scout out your quarry. Look through the windows and try to see if there's anything of value inside. Of course, things might not be visible at first glance, but it's worth the effort, as it can also tell you whether someone has ransacked it for themselves. Looking into the automobile in front of us, there didn't seem to be anything special about the interior at first. The floor was littered with trash, the owner having likely been someone who only drove themselves around. Looking closer, under one of the various fast food wrappers looked to be a reusable water bottle. Xavier seemed to notice it at the same time as our eyes locked. How do we get it then? Get in then? Well, it never hurts to try the door first. <laughs> Very funny. As he said that, I grabbed the handle and pulled open the door with ease. Oh, you were serious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt. I mean, the car cars might not even work at this point. You got to think about in the apocalypse, if things start going down south, if somebody's in their car and they decide they want to flee, I mean, they're not going to stop to lock their car. <laughs> so it's actually, yeah, very good, good thinking. Pushing, pushing the trash out of the way, I grabbed the metal container and, and unscrewed the top. We both recoiled as the pungent odor from inside was released. Ugh. 
Needs a good wash, but it seems to be usable otherwise. He began to push more trash aside and dug for any other trinkets while the musty smell of the car hung in the air. Now is the perfect excuse me. Now is the perfect time to start the game. Alright. What kind of person do you think owned this car? Someone horribly unorganized, that's for sure. Hey, stop calling me out. But what else about them? Make a story out of it. That's the point of this game. Hmm, let's see. Xavier took a moment to examine the car for what little it was worth now. Definitely a guy owned this. Likely somebody with an office job. They got too busy to be able to cook at home properly while managing other life things that, like work in the gym. So they took to fast food instead as it was blatantly easier. Since they stole, since they're the sole driver of the lazy mobile, they stopped caring about keeping it tidy and would just throw the packages in there. The car itself seems to be an older model and probably wasn't in the greatest condition even before the apocalypse. Compared to the others that were parked here, they believed they could get away with leaving it unlocked to make things easier on them. I nodded along to the tale my companion had woven. Not too shabby, kid. I'll make a storyteller out of you yet. I golf clapped for the bat as he gave me a small bow. Oh, that's a fuck. Oh, I get it. Ah, thank you, thank you. Ah, too bad there was nothing else of use here. That's the way it'll be a lot of the time. There's still one part of it to check, though. The click of the trunk popping open as I pulled the required lever drew our attention back there. Xavier walked over and peered inside. Anything in there? Ah, just a spare tire. He paused. And it's flat, too. Oh, this guy really needed to take better, better care of his things. I closed the door as Xavier simultaneously shut the trunk. Well, that should cover your latest how-to lesson. Any questions? Uh, one big one comes to mind. How do I get in if the door isn't unlocked? You, my one-winged wonder, are in luck because I have a perfect and easy solution to that problem. I rooted around in my bag for a moment before withdrawing a small pouch. Pouring a few of the ceramic shards into his hand, immediately his eyes lit up. Holy crap! You have ninja rocks? I take it you're familiar with them? I, I ninja rocks? Of course! I've seen tons of videos where they're used. I always wanted to try one myself. Well, now you can. I don't have a lot, unfortunately, so use them only if you deem a car worthy. Oh, will do. As the bat excitedly walked off to try a car by himself, I moved on to one of my own. The first one to catch my eye was a black hatchback situated near a corner of the lot, a chunk of cement denting its hood. Scanning the inside, I couldn't spot anything of interest, and to my disappointment, the door was locked as usual. I could have given up and went to the next vehicle, but a good feeling told me there was something here. Taking out the pouch from my pocket, I removed one of the ninja rocks from inside and tossed it at the driver's side window. Ooh. When the hard porcelain made contact with the glass, it immediately shattered, allowing me to use the hilt of my spear to, ch to clear the shards from it. Really? Ninja rocks. Interesting. I silently thanked Haven for introducing me to these little miracle workers. Breaking tempered glass was made so much easier now. Interesting, interesting. Crushed from spark plugs, ninja rocks were small, but... Oh. Crushed from spark plugs, ninja rocks were small, but sharp pieces of porcelain. In some places, they were even considered a bur as burglary tools. I unlocked the door and began to root around inside, hoping my instincts were right once more. Sure enough, packed away into the glove compartment was a folded up tarp. This would be incredibly useful for Haven, and could be used for some good trades. Satisfied, I slid the item into my pack and tried my luck with the rest of the car. As I did, I simultaneously tried to piece together the story of who owned the vehicle. Maybe it was a younger woman? Early twenties or so, trying to make it on her own in the city. The car was a gift from her parents when she left home. She took up a job as a grocery delivery person due to the room in her trunk. It didn't pay too much, but she could still get by. She'd go on girls weekends with her friends when she could, bringing the tarp along, should things get too wet and wild. Convinced I'd nailed the story, I closed the car door and went to go find Xavier to hear the tale he'd woven from his scavenging. I saw the bat standing next to a red sedan with its door open, his back to me. Hey kid. Piece together the car's origin story yet? He remained silent and motionless as I approached. Xavier, are you okay? Closing the distance between us, I took a look over the bat's shoulder to find his gaze concentrated, concentrated on the item he was holding. A child's teddy bear. 
I recalled internally for having called him kid moments earlier, as the harsh reality of the situation was setting in. Whoever owned this car in the past had a kid, and the likelihood of a kid surviving this world was slim to none. I'd met many parents who had lost their children in the past year. All heavily mourned their losses, and some couldn't live on without them. It was, a, it was a wish in life that a parent should never outlive their kid, but the cruelty of existence kept it just, as just that, a wish. I put a hand gently on Xavier's shoulder, snapping him out of his daze. You all right? I'm fine. I was just lost in thought for a moment. He brushed my hand off him and turned to face me. I could see his fur was a bit matted from tears. Are you sure? It's okay if you're... I said I'm fine. Let's just get this over with. The bat walked past me and into the, uh, the the bat walked past me and into the direction of another car. I reached my hand out to call after him, but it was like my mind was drawing a blank. I slowly let it drift back down to my side as I watched him go. The bear was still clutched in his hands. I propped my spear against the car and let out a sigh as I arched my back. The amount of times I'd had to bend over to root around getting to me. Xavier and I had finally managed to work our way back to the first floor, looting as many cars as we could. The parking garage had turned out to be better than expected. We found a half, we, we found a half-used pack of matches, a multi-tool, some duct tape, and had a huge stroke of luck in one car, having several cans of food. The majority of the first floor vehicles turned out to be looted, bringing a close to the task earlier than expected. The one that just, the one that just finished had seemed seemed promising, but produced nothing of value. I slammed the door closed to go and find Xavier, whose mood had brightened a bit since earlier, but something seemed, o seemed off. The noise from shutting it felt quieter than it should have been. I did a sweep of the garage, keeping an eye out for anything different from when we were down here earlier. A thought po poked at the back of my mind, and I had the urge to test it. I picked up a piece of fallen concrete, tossing it to the ground in front of me to listen to its clatter. Once again, the sound was muffled. Damn, uh-oh. I'm not sure, huh? This wasn't good. Over the past year, I'd heard stories of this sort of thing happening. Though the last account had been so long ago, I'd hoped it had vanished. There were too many stories of it, all so similar for me to pass off as an urban legend. What few had claimed to have seen it, what few had claimed to have seen it talked about its brutality, often leaving no often leaving nobody alive in the process. I'd written down the common themes about its traits in my journal. I began to walk as quickly as I could. Using the sides of my feet, a me use, using the sides of my feet, a method that had limited, uh, a method that limited the noise made by your footsteps. I reached into my bag to pull out the journal, flipping through the pages as I had the day prior to, to find the entry. There. The silence. Status of known height, approximately ten feet, when on all fours. Features: empty eye sockets, claws, fangs, rodent-like head, bony. And your pitch black skin ability drains all sound from the environment to heighten its own hearing. Range currently unknown. And weaknesses unknown. Uh oh. This was by far the deadliest fate to have appeared. Should it be the one? Should it be the? Uh, this was. This was by far the deadliest fate to have appeared. Should it be one? In, should it be one in the same? We had special lockdown procedures in case it, re it reared its haunting head. What little resonance that had accompanied the event and structure had been silenced, increasing my overall worries. The monster was closing in, and Xavier was completely unaware. I couldn't take the risk of calling his name, lest the creature hear it and come running. We had to be careful. Moving at such a fast pace in an awkward way was not easy on my feet, but I ignored the pain in favor of saving our lives. I rounded the ramp going to the next floor and narrowly avoided running straight into the bat. He opened his mouth to speak, but I clamped my hand around his muzzle, causing him to struggle momentarily in surprise. I held up the journal entry, his eyes drifting over and reading while the color drained from his face. We made eye contact again and he nodded so I could let go of his snow. I gestured to my feet so he could see how I was walking and imitated, carefully moving towards the entrance. I looked behind to make sure Xavier was following suit. The stepping method was a bit awkward at first, but he soon got the hang of it as, he, as we continued forward. I silently moved around the wall to, exit, to the exit ramp, holding my hand out behind me to stop my companion from going any further. I peeked my head out as to view the world above, watching carefully for any sign of the silence. 
felt his footsteps moments before he came into view. Oh boy. Oh shoot, an actual image of... Oh jeez. Large and lengthy, its pitch back black skin was stretched over what the untrained eye would believe was a seemingly weak frame. Kingsum. Interesting. An actual image of, um, of Dorian. So yeah, he's definitely confirmed human. Okay. Oh man. It's crazy. Hang on. Its ears twitched as the hollow sockets of its rodent skull stared into nothingness. Its mouth hung agape, something dripping off the fangs within as it seemed to be panting. What I had written for what I had written from witnesses was accurate, but more terrifying in person than I ever could have imagined. I was grateful for the evening sky illuminating it, illuminating it as it as in, I was grateful for the evening sky illuminating it as encountering this creature at night would have been fatal. In this range, I could barely hear my own heartbeat. The rest of the world utterly quiet. That's crazy how that looks, but it's interesting. Like, okay. My breathing matched the faded zone as I turned my head slowly to look at Xavier. I silently mouthed my words to him. So, I mean, well, I'll say it, but whatever you do, don't make a sound. He nodded, but his face was framed with confusion. He, gem he gently imitated holding a pole, resulting in my own confusion, before he gave a slight thrust of it forward in a stabbing motion. Horror dawned on me as I realized what he was asking. In my haste of panic, I... In my haste of panic, I left my spear behind at the car. Xavier must have seen the terror in my eyes as he gripped his bow tighter and waited, him having to be our sole fighter at the moment should it come to that. I cursed internally for letting myself make such a dumb mistake. What slim odds of survival we have were made, were made even slimmer. I brought, my eye, I brought my eyes back to the silence and watched as it stood at the top of the ramp, listening. We held our position for several minutes, not daring for a second to try any further movement in case of the worst. It raised a paw, beginning to step in our direction. Whatever noise it has heard us make earlier, it must have decided it was enough to investigate. Before I could even signal Xavier, however, its head jerked upwards and my heart skipped to be. Was our cover blown? Instead, it broke into a dash and bounded to the left and out of sight. The environment gradually gathered its ambience once more as the monster left, Xavier and I still too terrified to make a move. When I deemed it safe enough, I ran to grab my spear and met back up with the bat. We shared a look of understanding and carefully snuck our way up the ramp. There was, no sign that the si there was no sign that the silence was here anymore. With a nod, we broke into a sprint and ran off into the distance, my eyes momentarily drifting to where it had stood. A small pool of blood sat on the ground, rippling from our movement. We weren't the first things it had hunted that day. All right. Uh, actually, I still got some time. How about we call it here for now? After running a long while, we slowed down to speed walking in an attempt to put as much distance between us and the silence as possible. A fair amount of ground had been covered, so I was feeling a little better about stopping here, though the anxiety was ever present. Yeah. Oh man, that was actually pretty intense. Didn't think that was gonna go into that direction. Didn't think it was gonna go in that direction so soon. But, um, oh boy. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this episode edited and uploaded so you guys can see it, uh, I hope. So there are monsters in this world. I'm curious as to how that's actually gonna come into play. I mean, it's pretty creepy. It, this is giving me Walking Dead vibes for some reason. I guess because the, the nature of the faded, you know, being people who were previously, you know, animals, but you know, like people before they just turned into these things. And then you have this post-apocalyptic world, and then you have this society of people that's, you know, hopefully, you know, good and not corrupted. So, so we'll see. But thanks, you guys, for thank you guys for tuning in, any and everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed. I'm uh, gonna go ahead and try and have some more episodes uploaded fairly uh, early early on this week.
Uh, feel free to keep a lookout for other videos that I'm working on. A couple, a video essay, that animatic. Uh, gonna be live on Twitch, I think, later today. But um, feel free to follow me for on Twitter for updates about that too, or just updates in general. Cause I do have the Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, etc. But anyway, I hope you guys take care. Have a good day, or good evening, good night, whatever it is. Bye now.